Hello and welcome to India Interacts. Uh, today we have a very distinguished panel with us to discuss the discuss a subject which is very close to all Indians, uh, financial inclusion. How many Indians really have access to bank accounts? Now, there's a recent report uh, brought out by Nachiket Moore, headed by Nachiket Moore, uh, which says that 90% uh, of small businesses do not use uh, formal financial institutions or banks, and 60% of rural households in uh, uh, and urban households uh, do not have ba functional bank accounts. Uh, the report also says uh, and lends a very urgent need to to using technology, using uh, UID numbers to give bank accounts to all Indians by January 2016, uh, which, which is being seen as a very, very uh, tough deadline. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, it is there and the government uh, seems committed to, uh, to implementing it. Uh, so we will discuss uh, uh, this uh, today. Uh, and we have with us uh, uh, Mr. Monte Galwalia, Deputy Chairperson, Planning Commission. Uh, uh, to my left, uh, Mr. Uh, Charan Singh, who is a, uh, who's a professor at uh, IIM Bangalore, uh, RBI Chair Professor. Uh, we have Mr. Arvind Virmani, a former Chief Economic Advisor uh, with the Finance Ministry and a former Planning Commission member. And we have Jayati Ghosh, who is an Economics Professor at uh, JNU. Uh, now, can I start with... Uh, you, Dr. Alwalia. Now, uh, this is what the financial inclusion report, the latest one says, it lends a lot of urgency to doing, uh, giving everybody a, an Aadhaar number and bank account by January uh, uh, 2016. Uh, uh, how do you see this uh, pan out? First of all, let me say that uh, I'm solidly in favor, uh, both of expanding the Aadhaar number as a platform, and secondly, uh, deepening financial inclusion in terms of making sure that everybody has a bank account. Uh, I believe getting an Aadhaar number to virtually everyone, certainly to everyone who wants it, mm -hmm. okay, by the 2016 deadline is absolutely feasible. I mean, Nandan has already enrolled about 550 million people. Uh, so getting from 550, if you knock out minors and so on, I mean, it's not going to be difficult. So I think we will have Aadhaar numbers. The next question is, what's my view on financial inclusion? I mean, I'm quite clear that we should deepen financial inclusion, and that means that every individual should easily be able to open a bank account. Now, here, don't mind my taking a little bit of time, but it's important to explain this. See, at the moment, it's relatively easy to open a bank account if you have a huge amount of money that you can account for, and probably also if you can get an introduction from someone who's viewed by the banks as respectable. But if you don't have that, it is very difficult to open a bank account because partly because banks, two reasons. One is banks don't want to service smallholders. I mean, they don't think they make much money on it. And secondly, they will say, well, we don't know if you're a terrorist. So you need an introduction. And a 150 crore migrant lab, uh, labor yeah, and therefore, just therefore can't open a bank account. The yeah. important thing, the most important thing that the Reserve Bank has done is that for a no frills account, the only introduction needed is an Aadhaar number. So you walk into a bank with an Aadhaar number. So you're number. saying Aadhaar will be a reality by 2016? Well, it's for, already for the a reality population. for 550 million people. Now, I should clarify, by the is way. Is it working that, for 550 million? Look, I believe that, you know, first of all, every, every scheme always has some little glitch. The glitches are minuscule. The, there, is a, there is a lack of perception here that some people have got enrolled, so they are part of the 550 million. They may not yet have got their other numbers. Okay? Now, let's put it this way. If out of 550 million, 10% haven't got their other numbers, that's 55 million people. And several of them seem to send me emails saying, I haven't got my other number. <laughs> I invariably send it on to Nanda Nilakani, and we should close that gap quickly, et cetera, et cetera. I have no doubt that it will get done. So it's That's the first yeah, point. Okay. Second point is that the only way you can actually ensure that people have a bank account is through the mechanism where it becomes compulsory to open a no-frill bank account 
providing you have an Aadhaar number. No further introductions are needed. So RBI, and that's need, done. So RBI needs to move in and make RBI that happen. RBI has done that. And by the way, I'm saying this, I mean, I'm personally willing to write to Raghuram Rajan, if somebody with an Aadhaar number is being denied a bank account, I suggest you write to MK Venu for this program and give it, we'll compu compile an entire list and have the Reserve Bank look into it. Banks are under instructions that if you have an Aadhaar number, they cannot say no. Okay. So, uh, so, so far, so good. Uh, Mr. Charan Singh, I'll now come to you. You have been uh, director of banking in RBI and you've seen that side, regulatory side. And you've now, at the IIM, you've done extensive research uh, in the villages of uh, Karnataka and you've figured out what exactly do people want and you have somewhat different views and you, uh, uh, you've told me that you feel that it's all very top down uh, as it is happening so far. So just just give, give me an idea of what you think of uh, the way all this will pan out. So I'd like to start with Najiket report if you don't mind and you know, talk a little bit about it and then get on to what RBA has been doing in the last few years. W would that be okay? Yeah. As far well, as, uh, can, as, can far as of, the, uh, yeah, condense it. Uh, yes, and quicker, sure. Yeah. Uh, as far as Najiket committee report is concerned, yes, one of the important topic is Aadhaar and covering the whole country by 2016. Now, this is very correct. Almost half of the country, almost half of the country has been covered by the Aadhaar card, but it has to be also remembered most of the coverage has happened in low-lying fruit areas. So now starts the difficult part. And that difficult part is going to mean really difficult. I'm sitting here in front of you, sitting in the city of Bangalore, which is pretty modern. I have applied for Aadhaar card six months back. I haven't even heard of it. Now, this is the city of Bangalore from where Nandan comes. Now, the issue is we are going to spread out across the country in rural areas, smaller towns. So I'm not very sure that by 2016, we'll be able to meet the target. But in principle, I agree making Aadhaar card as a benchmark for opening a bank account is really a good suggestion. As far as the Nachiket Moore Committee report is concerned, there is something more to it. Now, when I've been reading this report, it looks like a very different report from what the Reserve Bank generally comes out. Reserve Bank reports are very readable, easy to understand, very comprehensive. This report is rather very complex. It's very difficult to understand. Complex, you said complex. It's a very complex report. I also feel there are too many things being attempted in one single report. And having a target to meet and cover all those things by 2016 is going to be a challenge by its own self. Now, what are the things that I have in mind? The report speaks about the payments bank. Now, that's going to change the whole scenario. It's going to talk of telecom companies coming in, the post office coming in. That's very difficult, involve lots of policy matters. Also, there is an issue of the anti-money laundering the mention about the terrorist funding that needs to be taken care of when it comes to the payment banks. Then he speaks about the wholesale bank. Now, what is the objective of the wholesale bank? Is it extending financial inclusion for which we are all interested? And we are not interested only yesterday or a year back, but since 1955 when we first nationalized the State Bank of India, we nationalized the other banks in 1969 and 1980. So we are all interested in financial inclusion. The issue is, would this report lead to financial inclusion? The other point which this report talks about removing the cap on interest rates. Now, I thought that was the very purpose of financial inclusion. We didn't want the people to go to the money lender and pay those high rates. As it is, under the financial inclusion story, which is coming out now, the MFIs, the self-help groups, people are already paying in the range of 30 to 45%. And if that cap is also removed, they would be paying as much as they pay but a money line. Yeah, but you, you, you were, you're talking about uh, demand from the people. Uh, uh, it doesn't sort of so quite correlate with what uh, the policy makers at the top are envisaging. Exactly. That is where I'm now coming to. So most of what I think, most of the work that has been done in, the, in India, in the RBI, in the government, is looking at the supply side. We want financial inclusion. We nationalize the banks. We come out with reports. And report after report, we come out with. Point is, has anybody evaluated what do the people in general want? Do the people in urban areas want some bank accounts? They want insurance products along with bank accounts. In rural areas, what is that they want? 
Sure. So, the evaluation yeah, has yeah, not yeah, been yeah. done. We, we, can, we, uh, can we just take this uh, to the other panelists? Now, I mean, what is, what do you think uh, will be the issues uh, that will come up in, in implementation of uh, this whole uh, project in such a short time? Yeah. See, I have questioned this approach for the last 15 years. So let me, uh, you know, Charan is new to this because he was on the other side. Yeah. I have been questioning it for 15 years and here's the problem. You mentioned nationalization and the central bank driven top down approach has been there from that time. You know, we assume we have all these great products, savings, loans, etc., which those people are dying to get, yeah. which they are unable to get. I think it's a wrong approach. I mean, it, it's not wrong 100%, but it's got you wherever it could, and we keep following it. We the other it more, approach, more bottom up. The other approach is what happened in South Africa. They had to deliver pensions to the rural areas, government pensions. That's how it started 15 years ago. And what they said was, okay, what's the best way to deliver it? Through the mobile phone. Then they went into M-Pesa, which is a cash uh, thing. So you have to see what is it the people need. Do they need all these loans and savings? I think we are going off on a wrong track. There may be 10% of them who need it, maybe 2%. So uh, my approach has always been allow real uh, mobile banking. That's the only way. Again, when we talk about mobile banking, we are saying the bank will use this as another instrument. You have correspondence, you have all kinds of things, but it's always from the bank down. But what you, you need are, to do is, yeah. I have 80% of the public now has cell phones, right? Make that into the bank. Okay, I have uh, on my cell phone, sure. I have uh, 600 rupees charged. It's a prepaid. Lots of people so you're across the for country. A complete disruption be, of the present yes, system. Yes, I'm saying you should be able to. I should be able to make this payment. I don't need to because I have a bank account. But the fellow out there in the rural areas should be able to receive the money from uh, that migrant. So you, you he should be able to pay it right from his phone. So you want total disru disruption of complete. the existing That's what system. my approach has been. Jayati, uh, a lot of what Arvind says is already happening. A lot of remittance transfer does occur through mobile telephony. We know that, whether it's Orissa, wherever there are large migrant concentrations, this is already happening in that very simple way. But to make mobile banking, which is a much more complex thing, there are huge regulatory issues. And therefore, banks are right to be concerned. The Reserve Bank is right to be concerned. I'm a little, uh, let me put it this, I'm a little confused at shall we say, the way the, the government is going about this or the RBI is going about this, because I think there are two slightly conflicting and contradictory approaches. On the one level, you have this drive for universalism, which is very hasty. Which nobody quarrels and, with, yeah. And you know, you mentioned low-hanging fruit. Let's face it, to get an Aadhaar card, you have to have a proof of residence. So that's already a big issue for many, many Indians. So in a sense, you know, you have already the 550 million are the ones who already have their proof of residence what are you going to do for the others in terms of that proof of residence how are you going to how long is it going to how are all the millions who will naturally get excluded from this be included in a reasonable way all of these have to be considered but in any case it's a really no frills account that is generated now if you want anything above no no frills the same RBI gives you a new set of regulatory things which is related to know your client, right? The KYC norms are actually quite stupendous. And many people I know have actually had accounts frozen, including myself, because some KYC norm conflicts with another. My mother, my, my daughter, my mother-in-law, and my brother-in-law, and myself, we have all had our accounts frozen because our Aadhaar cards give us an address in which somebody has helpfully typed in some extra words. <laughs> so of course the KYC then says, oh my God, you have a different address. I have JNU RK Puram on my address. So of course my account gets frozen because the KYC norm doesn't allow you to have a different address, even if it's a mistake of the fellow who was typing it in in the Aadhaar card. So these are technical issues? With these are, no, th these are technical issues for you and me. But these are huge issues for a very large proportion of our population that doesn't have the paper trail or the time, energy, and, and so on to get into this. Yeah, okay. So the minute you get into that, you're not going to have that kind of inclusion. Sure. Yeah. So we'll, uh, let's take a small break here, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we'll be back with you soon. Uh. Welcome back to India Interact. So uh, Dr. Aluwalia, from uh, what we've learned from other panelists, it seems uh, very clear that uh, 
that there would be a lot of glitches uh, to go from 560 uh, million Aadhaar cards to then covering the entire population in such a short time. And, uh, and as Jayati says, uh, they may appear like technical problems to already empowered people uh, uh, in the urban areas, but uh, for, for the rural uh, masses, uh, uh, it may turn out to be a different ball game. Now, how do you how do you sort of institutionalize some of these uh, new things that are coming in place? Because it's a replacement of the entirely, uh, the old structure com in, a, in a sense completely. So, Well, let me say, uh, I think between Charan and Arvind, there is a separate debate. Yeah, that, yeah, Charan exactly. feels that the top-down uh, nationalized banks, etc., was working quite well. He also has some views on the Nachiket Moore report, which I don't think is we need to go into because yeah. I wasn't told yeah, yeah, we're sure. going to discuss the report. I mean, it's a good report, but you know, not enough time. Uh, Arvind, on the other hand, says that this centralized top-down it got you whatever it has, and therefore we did need to make a change. I leave yeah, that. He, Arvind is arguing for disruption of the existing yeah. distribution system. I'm generally in favor of disruption because I think when you've got a mature system, if you start a disruptive system, then if it's strong enough, it will modify itself, and if it can't, it's better to be disrupted. So I think basically I agree with him. I don't think, by the way, that the public sector banks are going to collapse. But they're certainly, certainly going to react. I'm absolutely amazed and, and also a bit shocked at what uh, Jayati just said. Because if it is true that our banking system is responding to the introduction of Aadhaar in the way they are doing, then they should stop. And I'm certainly going to bring it to the notice of the governor. It was never the intention that the Aadhaar card and its address would then permeate into the use of the rest of the accounts. That's totally wrong. And if they're doing it, they don't know what they're doing. By the way, that's quite possible. But you know, it's only when these problems, these glitches arise, uh, that the system can respond to them. So I'm not so worried about it, though I recognize what she's described is totally unacceptable. Okay. So we come to two you things. Mean what she described as in her personal experience with the other card. Yeah, right? yeah, sure, sure. I mean, I mean I'm just appalled, that's all. Uh, and, and I will we'll handle that separately. I think the Reserve Bank, in my view, let me explain what I mean. The Aadhaar card number, rather the Aadhaar number, by the way, there's no such thing as an Aadhaar card. I mean, in fact, when this whole uh, thing started, Arvind was one of the originators, maybe the originator of the idea of having a unique ID. And then, of course, Nandan came in later and it's now become a system. You do not actually need to have an Aadhaar card. All you need to know is your Aadhaar number. If it's convenient for you to keep a card in your pocket, do so. If you want to tattoo the number on the back of your hand, that's also fine. So the number is your KYC Yes, certificate. you're supposed to go into the bank and he says, who the hell are you? And you either say, well, I have several zillions of dollars in various other accounts and I can explain things. Or you say, listen, I am a citizen of India and I don't have any contacts with anybody, but I have an Aadhaar number. He is supposed, or she is supposed, whoever the teller is, to get your Aadhaar number, take a biometric read of your uh, biometric, your, your thumb impression, and telephonic, I mean, uh, mobile telephony-wise, check it against the centralized database. If the centralized database shows that this fellow is actually the Montego Alualia who claims to have this Aadhaar number, the man is supposed to open a no-frills account. That doesn't mean that he's supposed to now muck up all my other accounts. That's a separate issue. Okay. Now, two issues arise. Number one, can we roll it out? Well, we've done 550 million. Uh, I don't know what the numbers that we'll want is, minus uh, Charan, who's applied. And you know, I agree there are glitches, but let me say whether it's done by 2016 or by 2016 December, this is an open question. But you know, if you're looking at long-term changes, it'll get done. It probably, you will almost always be able to find somebody in the country who doesn't have an Aadhaar number because he doesn't want one. Okay, okay the system is passive. In fact, the rich don't want Aadhaar numbers actually. See, exactly. <laughs> By the way, they don't want Aadhaar number because they, they're the ones that do not want the Aadhaar number to be linked to every bank account and every credit card because it will actually yeah. enable you to tell what they're Can doing. I, uh, uh, Dr. Alwali, there's another common uh, strand to what uh, Sharan, uh, Arvind and Jayati uh, are saying, which is uh, quite apart from the technical aspects of uh, 
whether we can deliver Aadhaar card and link bank accounts to the entire population by 2016. They are raising the issue of what do people actually want, the poor, yeah. what, what, what sort of financial products are they demanding, uh, is there any uh, authentic survey by done by any government body yeah. to, to understand what they want because Charan Singh and Jayati, they tell me that that they they need no, no. I mean there's they need apples and we are trying to deliver no, oranges. No, there's a fair yeah. issue. If you ask someone, of course nobody wants an Aadhaar card or a number. They want money, they want income, but what they do want, they would like to be able to utilize banking services. Uh, depending on how much money they have, they might find it more convenient to have it in a bank account rather than rolled up in a in a bag and put under the mattress. And they do want uh, the ability to transact payments. That is, if you're a migrant worker from Bihar or somewhere in Delhi, and you want to send 500 rupees to your family, you need to be able to do it quickly. I mean, the old uh, money plus, order plus system doesn't work. they need short-term loans, three that's months, a, six that's months, that's a separate for, for various marriages, that's a separate uh, issue. That's you know, a separate education, issue. which the money lender that's delivers to them. That's not going to be, so, that's not going to come from having an Aadhaar card. Please remember, that's, that's what I'm a getting bank at. account, exactly, that's a what bank I'm getting account at, yeah. is not the same thing as a bank account with a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, the fact of the matter is that if you are a completely destitute person, and there are people in that position, and you're not getting anything from the government, then there's no reason why you would particularly want a bank account. But if you're a poor person who's getting money from the government, you are hugely benefited if it comes to a bank account electronically, because you don't have to go anywhere to collect a check. So then the you question, don't have to go anywhere Jerry, to collect cash. The question, next question is then what happens to the bottom 200 million people who may just not uh, no, that's not account. true. No, 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 wait a minute. They get a lot of, you're getting Narega payments, you're getting uh, old age pension, you're getting scholarships for your children. Now, in a non-electronic transfer mechanism, there are numerous intermediary steps where either due to laziness or corruption, the transfer of money stops. If you have any program which has a digitalized list of beneficiaries and the government has decided to use the Aadhaar bridge, Basically, one press of the button, which can be checked whether it was done on January, on the first of the month, will instantly transfer into the accounts of all the people through the Aadhaar Payments Bridge the money involved. Okay, Jenny, that's fantastic. I, I, yeah, you want I, to say I, something? No, I, you know, one thing is about whether you're tr going to transfer payments like NREGA wage wage payments to bank accounts. Pension, that's fine. Old age pensions, etc. Fine. Social no problem with any of that. Pension, scholarship. But no, I would. I want to say, what do we mean by financial inclusion? Ah. It is access to financial services so, that's of different kinds. So what are they? There's the savings function, the ability yeah. to save in a reasonably secure way. R risk there management. There is a risk management function, insurance products. There is a credit function, which is to do with working capital and access to productive capital of different kinds. Sure. What are we doing for that? And all this Aadhaar stuff, frankly, is simply not relevant out here. No, no, no but Aadhaar is a big I platform. Mean, it's, a, no, it's a platform. No, that's, let's, no. let's, not, let's take that question. No, no, what she's saying no. that Aadhaar is a platform. No, no. How do you deal with the cultural issue of people it's not just uh, cultural. going to moneylender all the time? It's not, no, it's not, not cultural because they cannot access the institutional finance. No. Even with the Aadhaar no-fills account. They go to money accounts. lenders, right? They go to money Even with the Aadhaar no-fills account, you're not going to be able to get a loan for working capital if you're Let a small me, no, entrepreneur. Can I respond to yeah. that? Because it's a very important issue. Yeah. I think it's a complete mis... I mean, she did it rather well because she said, what are the services okay, that you want? Savings, putting your money in a bank is a very important savings function. If you have a KY, I mean, an Aadhaar type bank account and you've saved 50 rupees, well, you can keep it in your pocket or somewhere in the home where either your kid or your husband or whoever uh, will somehow or the other get access to it, or you can feed it into your bank account through uh, mobile telephony and the banking correspondence system. That's a huge gain because at any given time, uh, your money is safe. You can always get it, but it requires somebody to persuade you that you're going to actually get it. That's a service. Okay. Uh, payments made to other people, transferring money to your kid who may happen to be in a school somewhere, that's a service. Receiving government payments is a huge service. I agree with you that there's nothing system so far that will say the bank will lend you money. But even there, I believe that with the Aadhaar system in platform in place, 
as you do lots of business, you've worked in Bihar, you move from Bihar to somewhere else or whatever, all your utility bill payments are identified by Aadhaar, you will be able to establish a credit record which will make it easier for you to get money. I mean, look, today, okay, a, yeah. if somebody moves from Bihar so that, with a the perfect next, yeah, record to Mumbai, the, that record is useless. Sure. That's the next step. Uh, Mr. Charan Singh, you, you have worked, uh, you've done uh, surveys in Karnataka in villages. What's your experience? W what do people want? Exactly. Now, uh, I, it's very interesting to listen to this debate, but I'm very sorry to mention that when you go and speak to the people at large, you get a very different perception. That's what I was trying to say. There's need for an evaluation. Yes, the Reserve Bank has done lots of work since 92. We have the no-frill accounts. We have liberalized the KYC norms. We have done financial inclusion report after report after 2008. Why is it that after about 60 years of efforts, everybody doesn't have a bank account, but 90% of the Indian population has a mobile, uh, mobile telephone? So there must be something wrong. And I think something wrong in our efforts. So I think that evaluation has not been done. Now to me, India, even if you take rural India or urban India, is not one India. You have large farmers who have different requirements. You have small farmers who have entirely different requirement. You have artisans who have entirely different. And of all this, women have a different requirement. This is the rural area where I'm doing the survey now. In urban and what areas, are your findings in general? Yes. Uh, in can can urban you quickly sort of encapsulate yeah. In urban areas, in 2006 and 7, I did a small survey in Bombay in the modern plush area of Cuff Parade. Therein, I had interviewed head load workers, auto rickshaw drivers coming from Bihar and different parts of India. I had also interviewed banana sellers who would come not from faraway places but from a rural Maharashtra into Bombay. Also interviewed the Dabba Wallas. Now, what do they say? very different perception and you will be surprised to see what they are telling me. Some of them told me they really don't need a bank account. And I was surprised to listen. Why? why, why, don't, why, you why? don't you need to keep your savings? Don't you feel unsafe if you have to keep the saving in your own dress because you, they don't have a place to stay. They're sleeping on the platforms or somewhere like this. The auto rickshaw drivers told me if I have to remit money, and auto rickshaw drivers mostly in Bihar come from, uh, mostly in Bombay come from Bihar and far off places. When they have to remit money, they don't feel confident going to the post office, they don't feel confident going to the bank, and that's why they don't want a bank account. They remit money through different channels. And they say it's just a phone click away. So informal channels are informal working much are more working. than the formal channels. The third thing I realized, financial literacy in even urban Bombay is totally lacking. There is a typical type of fear in the minds of this downtrodden cadre, which we are trying to include, of even stepping into the bank. This is Bombay. Okay, we'll, we'll come to literacy later. Uh, Arvind, uh, you were also kind of saying similar, uh, making a similar point as to what, what do people want and a bottom-up approach. Can you give some solutions? I mean, we, we've just spoken the about solution problems. solution, in my view, is simple, what I have been saying for 10 years, which is that allow the, the mobile to be used as a bank. So, that, you know, if you look at it, uh, that's why I gave the example of myself, It'll right? It will solve some of the problems they that They have all my information. They have the money. I take out the money. Whenever I use that money, instantaneously they have a record. The whole recording system is there. All you need to do is allow two things. One is to be able to transfer. They don't have the right for me to transfer 10 rupees to your phone. So that, that's the a second point, you need yeah. to do is give them a little bit of scope for uh, giving interest. Okay, because I don't need the interest. I have 500 lying around here. But if it's a poor guy, he maybe should have, you know, a couple of percent of interest. Yeah. These two changes, well, that's all. Jethi, uh, tell me, uh, the, the f current banking system, they seem to be resisting the use of mobiles because they see it as a threat to their business. How do you resolve that? No, I mean, look, there are regulatory issues also. The very limited use that Arvind has suggested, I think that's fine. That's a very limited use and it's, you know, it's, it, it's basically a transaction mode. But I said, you know, there's the, all the other aspects of financial inclusion. We have an un informal or unorganized economy where, you know, 96% of the workforce is employed, 2% of the bank credit, right? We, are, we really have to think about how are we going to include the productive part of the economy in working capital, in other loans and so on and so forth. And I don't think that has merit seri merited serious attention. I really think that what you need to do is think of different models. 
So it's not one centralized value so mul model. Multiple models. Could just I just one? finish, Arvind? I would. Why? Yes. Why okay. Mobile telephony. Things, yeah. But you know, particularly, why not go in for more different kinds of cooperative credit organizations with different regulatory structures? Why not community banking? Smaller banks. Patterns? Why not community banking patterns? Why not different? Why are we we'll, not we'll, open yeah. to I, I, things that? We will take this uh, yes. forward in the next yeah. uh, uh, session. Uh, we'll take a small break here. Please don't go away and keep watching uh, India Interact. Welcome back to India Interacts. We are having a discussion on financial inclusion. Dr. Aluvalia, Jayati was uh, rightly suggesting that, that India is such a multi-layered society that you need multiple models. Uh, there could be cooperative bank, there could be small bank, there could be, as Arvind said, could mobile based delivery. So, is, is there a problem? Can, can't we have uh, multiple delivery uh, models? No, let, let, let's separate these two issues. Okay. Uh, Jayati is saying, don't just have uh, nationalized banks and private sector banks. Cooperative banks already exist, yeah. but she's saying maybe there can be little community banks, sure. different kinds of banks. Yeah. The key issue, I'm by the way in favor mm -hmm. of introducing competition within banking, okay. but the key issue is all these banks will have to be regulated by the RBI. Sure. Maybe you can have a system where the smaller banks have a slightly lighter touch regulation, okay. but I'm definitely in favor competition. So okay. I think I agree with Jayati. Okay. As far as Arvind is concerned, he's talking about something quite different. He's saying, I can use my mobile company oh. as a bank. But that's also another delivery system. No, no, system. I'll tell you why. Oh. The reason is the mobile companies don't want to be regulated by the Reserve Bank. Yeah. So today what will happen is, what he wants is, I charge my phone oh. 1,000 rupees or whatever it is. I should be able to transfer that to somebody else yeah. who has a phone yeah. uh, directly. Oh. And now what that and if I get that impression, mm -hmm. then the money that I've given to the telecom company mm -hmm. becomes in a manner like a deposit. Okay. Now, I think the Reserve Bank, I agree with the Reserve Bank on this. The Reserve Bank view is that please do not let anybody accept mm -hmm. what people are going to call a deposit mm -hmm. if they're not a regulated banking system. Okay. Now, what they've done mm -hmm. is they have introduced what are called banking correspondence. Okay. Yeah. So, with a banking correspondent, I mean, you can transfer money from your account via a banking correspondent to anybody else who has an account. Okay. But at the back of this, there must be a bank. Okay. What Arvind is saying is, the hell with the banks, let it all be done by the mobile companies. Yeah. And That's RBI's view is that that would make the money you give <coughs> to the mobile company like a deposit. Yeah. And people would think they've got a thousand rupees there, yeah. which they can transfer whenever they like. Sure. And there's no guarantee. If the phone company goes bust, I mean, your deposit is gone. So I, I want Arvind to reply to this. But, but before that, I want to put it to the audience. Uh, how many of you would really want to uh, be comfortable doing banking with your mobile? Uh, I mean, no, no, that's uh, not the uh, question. Yeah. How, how comfortable are you yeah. <coughs> giving money to the mobile company okay. and trusting them to deliver money? Yeah. That's the issue. So uh, how many of... Uh, Please raise your hands. How many of, of you would be comfortable, uh, you know, dealing with a mobile company as a as a channel for deposits or, uh, or payments? Payments. Not just payments, as a custodian of yeah. deposits. Everybody is quite willing to have them be a one transaction. little hand at the back. Otherwise, yeah. nobody is. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, so RBI stands vindicated. On so this one. okay, okay. Now, now. Uh, so no counter. Yeah. No, we have a uh, counter by all means. Okay, uh, Arvind, what's your so, argument in favor very, of very mobile Very simple. Phone? We yeah. just talked about lighter regulation. That's exactly it. Who's saying it should be unregulated? Yeah. You so, can regulate so it. Can regulate the question it. is regulation from zero to one. Yeah. Do you want the heavy end of one or do you want it closer to one okay. tenth or two tenths? I mean, okay, Arvind is saying it's not that not an arbitrary Ar thing. Arvind is saying that if RBI actually regulates mobile companies uh, to the extent for this th 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 for this purpose for yeah. payment and uh, 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 deposits. Then will you be all right? I mean, I just want to sort of uh, uh, get the audience. No. No. Still not. Okay. Right. Okay, okay for us, but then when it comes to uh, the people who are be below poverty line, uh -huh. they are not educated to those mobile mm. services. But what about them? Aadhaar card is mainly for them, and mm. Aadhaar is a completely different it, yeah, issue. It, it is. Yeah. But then, what we want is uh, completely different. It's nothing to do with lending and payment. Account. So, so what is it? What's your question to the panel? No, but let me, I think I sense your question. I mean, 
if you're a poor person and you're working under a Magnarega scheme, and maybe you're getting X thousand rupees out of that. If you, in the present system, somebody is paying that out, okay? If you, even if you get a check, you have to go to your bank to deposit the check and the bank may be 30 miles away. What the present system will do is all your Magnarega payments will be credited automatically to a bank account because the moment they make the payments based on whatever records they have, one press of a button through the Aadhaar payment bridge, one million people who have worked for different days will get the amount of money due to them and they will be able to operate that account through the mobile phone. That's phenomenal because it saves time and it avoids harassment and leakage. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll take a question from the audience. My question is, uh, uh, first of all, for the mobilizing of money. As in recent times, we have saw that uh, legalization of uh, virtual currencies came into place in US and several other countries and even bitcoins and litecoins have accounted about nine uh, US million dollars. So uh, is there any policy or in planning uh, that uh, India will also allow to follow a similar currencies? system? Yeah, yeah no yeah. virtual currencies virtual in currency. our okay. banking system. Okay. Well, uh, when you say planning, certainly the planning commission is not planning any of this. Maybe, I don't know what the Reserve Bank's policy is towards virtual currency, but I'm not aware that the government is taking any positive position on this very it's new it's phenomenon. It's, it's, it's actually banned. The RBI has actually banned. banned Bitcoins. It's exactly what I'm saying. What this would be yeah. would be a currency, exactly okay. what it is. So this, yeah. uh, okay. But it's banned. It's okay. not allowed. Okay. Yeah. So the, the mobile, the use of mobile for uh, payment uh, deli uh, delivery is, is a virtual currency, right? See, anyone can make payment, uh, yeah. uh, whether he is using through internet or he is using through mobile phones. Correct. But it yeah. will influence users to use their mobile so, phones. So you're, you're, you're saying it should be allowed, it should be in a regulated uh, manner, it should be allowed in India too. That's what you said. Yeah, because right? some uh, developed economies have already adopted virtual currencies as their okay. currency uh, type. And even in US, mm -hmm. 9 million US dollars have accounted only for the bitcoins. Okay. okay. So uh, you don't think so that India should also have to work on that? on yeah. legalizing virtual currency. I guess for certain segments it could uh, it could work, yeah. No, by the way, yeah. I don't fully know what bitcoins are, mm -hmm. so I just want to say that... Uh, no, what Arvind suggested, that's virtual uh, actually currency. Actually, no, my no, currency no, is no, in no. between. Bitcoin is not a totally bitcoin. virtual. Yeah. Bitcoin is not it a It has no basis, okay. but mine is connected to actual currency controlled by the central bank. Central bank. So you can regulate it. No, uh, Jethi, no you're saying something? No, yeah. What Arvind is suggesting is just increasing the velocity of your money. It's, oh. not, uh, it's not a new currency. Okay, okay. Uh, bitcoins, you know, it's not that countries are allowing it. Uh, the bitcoin has basically slipped through the regulatory crack. Okay, okay. Because it is not a medium of exchange that is recognized by okay. any monetary authority. So it's problematic. But it is yeah. nonetheless being used by a bunch of people and you can't stop them. If they're saying, you're it. saying something on bitcoins? <laughs> My understanding is India that is the banned it. Yeah, yeah. bitcoin in India has been banned. Yeah. It's been Formally banned in banned. many other countries. Not a question it's of been banned tracks. in China and many other countries. But the point which uh, he's mentioning, I have some reservations about it. Now, the concern that the central bank has always had is a, a anti money laundering yeah. giving it in the in the with the telecom company and using it for this purposes sort of sort of is going to relax the regulation and supervision by the central bank of the yeah. country yeah. now this is what i get reminded of the glass steagall act of 1933 yeah. it had it got eroded over period of time by 1999 it had totally mm -hmm. been withdrawn mm -hmm. and then suddenly you find that the the unregulated system comes in the yeah. play yeah. and the whole financial system is blown up so i think most importantly if you do a survey and find out what people really want in financial inclusion yeah. you will come out with different different prescriptions do they really just want to open an account for transaction purposes this is what we are thinking okay. but when you do a survey of the bankers who are serving those areas yeah. or of the people who are sitting there and asking you for financial services, it's a totally different demand that they have, okay. which has not so been examined. So you're saying there's a, there's a disconnect between the, the top policy maker and the yeah, user. Uh, the, the, okay, any more uh, uh, questions? Can I, can uh, I, can yeah, I yeah. just clarify that a little yeah. bit? Yeah. You know, obviously what people want, people would want that whatever wa wages are due to them under <laughs> Manrega should be paid on time, without leakage, without harassment, without yeah. delay. Yeah. What I'm saying is the only way you can do that is through this system. Okay. Otherwise, you can say what you like, mm -hmm. but
but it is impossible to stop the leakage and the harassment and the delay. Sure. So it's not a question of what people want. People want speed, transparency, easy transactions, getting their money when they need it. The only way the government can deliver that is through this system. You know, now, people don't understand that. Can we take a okay, question on the lady here? While, okay, before, yeah. sorry, you know, people are also producers. And a very large segment of your economy is not just a recipient of public services, they are producers. And you need to provide access to productive loans to 96% of your workforce. I agree with that. Yeah. And but you know, we are if not you, thinking so you, of the methods So that you're saying different that. services or different sections yeah, that you're talking right. about. But if you take the set of uh, bank holders today, okay. what proportion wants loans? It will probably be 5%. So you can't, you know, fine, that 5% needs, and out of those 50% who don't have bank accounts, there's also be 5%. Yeah, yeah. But again, we shouldn't exaggerate it and say everybody wants loans and every for their farmer, production. Every farmer wants loans. But, but those are a every certain farmer. proportion of bank holders. I mean, can we take a question from the lady here, please? There's 60% yeah. of yeah, the non-bank holders. These bank activities are done for poor, right? Yeah. But if the poor people doesn't have money or they are not educated, why these bank accounts? What they m value for them? Yeah, that's what he was explaining. But yeah. I thought yeah. I answered that. No, I mean, suppose you have a not very educated person who is earning money under the Manrega scheme. So every year, he's probably earning 13,000 rupees. Okay? What I'm saying, and you can question that, what he wants is probably that every day that he or she works, give him the money at the end. Can't be done every day, so it has to be done every 15 days. That means somebody is keeping a tally, and when you try to collect the money, whoever it is who's giving you the money takes a cut. This system enables that person to get it without delay. And let me tell you, the evidence suggests that illiteracy is not something that prevents people from using mobile phones. There are a lot of illiterate, less educated people today using mobile phones. So we're not understanding that this helps them. I agree with Jayati, by the way. The biggest mistake is to think that the Aadhaar platform will solve the problem of delivering credit services. It will make a very small contribution to that. And for that, you need a separate discussion. I think we need to do more. We need many more institutions. Microfinance institutions should be allowed to do it, yeah. and they are doing it, and that's a different discussion. Yeah, we come back to what Jaiti was saying, multiple has, models here. Yeah. she has another question. But, yeah. uh, but sir, by using mobile, she she does, there are many expenses. <coughs> but for poor, there's the problems like uh, recharge, net recharges, like mm. these things. Mm. Uh, 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 let, me, let me explain. It's not actually necessary for you to own a mobile phone in order to utilize a Aadhaar enabled bank account. If you are in a village and the local banya has become a banking correspondent and you have got yourself an Aadhaar number subject to these problems, linked to that bank Aadhaar number, you've gone to a bank, the bank has taken your fingerprints and given you a bank account, that also needs to be worked out, and you refuse to use a mobile phone, that's fine. They will tell you when, and you can give your aunt's number, your son's number, your husband's number, whatever it is, that when they've made a payment, you'll get an SMS saying this much money has come into your bank account. Then you go to a banking correspondent in your village and say, listen, I want cash. I'm transferring 100 rupees into your account using your thumbprint. Give me the cash. He'll give you the cash. So poor, the notion that poor people are not being helped is, I think, not correct. Maybe we haven't explained it properly. But they will be hugely helped. Yeah, but just a footnote, currently the average received per year is less than 4,000 rupees. Average? Received per, per Manrega per yeah. is yeah. less than 4,000 yeah. rupees. They, they know, I think we've confused people about Very the small. benefit transfer and the inclusion. Yeah. It's got all mixed up, That's which right. is confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but anyway, you want to clarify. Uh, uh, yeah. No, but it, maybe they're for Manrega, they're different. not going no, for yeah, it yeah. fine. No, no, uh, there are uh, social... Uh, no, the I, pension, I'm not, yeah, I, I mean, transferring those, things, those two banks is fine, but that's not inclusion. Inclusion is a much larger... No, I agree. Thing. If yeah. your point is inclusion is getting access to credit services, then frankly, what this platform will do is that for a person who has a credit history, he'll be able to prove it. I mean, for example, giving an Aadhaar number when you're paying your utility bills, and you've moved from Bihar to Mumbai, 
Now, it's quite useful for the bank in Mumbai that is checking you out because you're a new guy, you've got no record in Mumbai. If they know that you, were, you borrowed from a cooperative bank in Bihar and paid it dutifully, you have been running util uh, paying utility bills regularly, through your Aadhaar number and identification, they'll be able to get, or you'll be able to give them verification. That's the only help. Otherwise, the banks will lend to people who they think are credit worthy. You may think they're not doing a good job, but you have to fix that. Yeah. You want to bring in competition, do so. Uh, you want to bring in microfinance institutions to compete with the banks, do so. And that's so, what we need to do. Yeah, so, uh, so let me resolve this confusion. Now, there's a, there's a, plat there's a delivery uh, system, and you can reach out to the entire Indian population through Aadhaar and a bank account. But that need not lead to financial inclusion. We, you may still be stuck with a situation where small businesses do not access bank funds, uh, uh, as the report shows. And by Only the way, it leads to inclusion. Yeah. It doesn't lead to credit. Credit, See, yeah. Financial inclusion is not just the right to walk into a bank and get money. I, mean, I want to be included too, if that's your definition of inclusion. Yeah, inclusion in terms, a lot of other services. Yeah, in terms of access to ser other services. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, so, okay, I have time just for two more questions. Please, uh, uh, is there anybody who would want to? Yeah. Please, uh, the give the mic to that gentleman at the back. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm Desh Deepak. Can so you hold it up to your mouth because we can't hear a word. Okay. Sir, the question is, if a person is earning a 33 rupees a day, one statement from your government came that if a person is earning a 33 rupees per day, he lets a normal life. Then do you really think that would he be able to maintain a bank account? Or would they be able to the mobile banking? Sorry, uh, I didn't get. If a so person is earning what? Person is earning 33 rupees a day, which is that. The One of your statement that the government have said that if a person is earning a 33 rupees a day, would lead a normal life. Then do you really no, think? No, by the way, that I don't think the government has ever said that. No, I have really heard from Dr. Manmohan Singh the same question most of the times on the TV, television, no, and from the media. You. Let me explain to you. Yeah. You are referring line. to a poverty line that was fixed some years ago. Okay by Professor Suresh Tendulkar, mm. which actually corresponds to a household income of approximately 4,000 rupees a month. I think, yeah. So there's 33, so let's talk about somebody who has a household income of 4,000 rupees a month. I think such a person may well want a bank account because somebody who's, if his son is working as an in, uh, a worker in Mumbai, may want to transfer money to him. So I think that, that you have to keep I think in we're mind. taking the debate somewhere else. Uh, we'll, no, but uh, that's we'll, the issue. <laughs> we, we'll take a small break here and uh, we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to India Interacts. So, uh, please, audience, any other uh, questions uh, that you have uh, for our panelists? Uh, yeah. I'm Nena Kapoor. And um, as we're concluding, I would like to have a take-home message from your side. If I'm a poor sitting in this audience hall, and I were to attend all your debates, what is the take home message for me? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, you, I, I you, like you're this. the policy maker. <laughs> I li no, I like this approach. I think the take, ho take home message for you, uh, there are really three. No matter how poor you are, the government is operating a system where you will be able to open a bank account. We may not be doing it very efficiently right now. That's a separate issue, and you should definitely complain. You should be able to open a bank account. Even someone who's actually, he has to give an address. By the way, my understanding is to open an Aadhaar account, you do not need proof of address. You just have to state an address, okay? It may not be working that way, but I'll double check that. Mm -hmm. Having opened an account, you should be very clear, this doesn't give you a guarantee that the bank is going to lend you money. That's a separate operation. But what it does give you a guarantee is that if you want to keep your money safe in your account, you can do that without going to the bank. You just go to the neighboring Banya who happens to be a banking service correspondent, give him 50 rupees, tell him to charge it, transfer it. He'll put it on his own account and it'll be, he can transfer from his account to your account 50 rupees and you walked into the shop with 50 rupees in cash, and you walk out of it without any cash, and your account has been charged 50 rupees. Anytime you want to withdraw that, go to the same fellow and say, I want to take out 25 rupees, 
he'll give you 25 rupees and debit your account. Now for this transaction, your thumb impression is necessary. He can't just do it like that. That's the first part. Second, you want to either send your kid some money or he wants or she wants to send you some money. If they have a bank account and they can get the same bank account in the same way, you can transfer money to your child or your child can give money to you. And third, if you're getting any money from the government, now Janani Suraksha Yojana, National Social Assistance Program, the old age pensions, Manrega, scholarships, you don't have to go somewhere to collect your check. The government will transfer on a predetermined date digitally via an Aadhaar payment bridge directly to your account. I think those are very, very important gains when they've been internalized. Because today, anybody will tell you that the transaction cost of dealing with a bank is huge. You have to go to the bank branch. I mean, remember, we have 600,000 villages and only 60,000 bank branches. So most people would have to waste half a day, if not more, to get to the bank. You don't need to see your bank manager unless you want credit. Credit is a different issue altogether. The Aadhaar platform will help in that, but all the things that Jayati is saying are correct, and we need to work on that. And financial inclusion does mean access to credit. This part, however, is not unimportant, and this is the part that Aadhaar is doing. Jan Singh, you would like to respond to her? Yeah, my, uh, my thoughts would be like this. I think as far as the government and the RBI and Nabad are concerned, we have done enough for 60 years. It's now time to evaluate. Ask the bankers. You've been in the field. Why is financial inclusion not taking place? And they will tell you, every few years you change the strategy, you change the policy. It involves cost in implementing it. We incur cost in even unwinding all those efforts. We also need to ask the consumers, why is it that we want you to take a bank account and you are reluctant to accept it? And they will tell you, for you, we are one. But we are not one. There are different segments in rural and urban areas. Their requirements are different. These need to be assessed. Why is it that the money lender is charging double the amount, but people still go back to the money lender? We also need to think, what is happening? Why are these recommendations not getting implemented successfully? And here, I have one very simple example. 101,55,000 post offices in the country. None of them have an ATM machine on their premises. 1,34,000 post offices in rural areas. Why can't we help the people inculcate banking habits? And I think one of the way to encourage them to inculcate banking habit is expose them to the ATM. And they will see what benefit it is. And that can be easily done uh, through the post office mechanism. Thank okay. you. So Arvind, uh, you'd like to respond and f clarify what you were talking about, the confusion between mode of delivery and actual inclusion. Uh. See, uh, what I was saying was that, you know, one is the issue of delivery of government payments, yeah, right? That, that's separate, and, yeah. and uh, that's what uh, Mr. Alwalia has been but emphasizing. But that is not all financial services all about. I do have a about, comment yeah. on that. You know, the, 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 uh, he mentioned that we actually, the working group uh, of the plan and the uh, committee, we, which uh, worked out under my chairmanship, the UID, what we had uh, worked out was a phase program. I, I must say this uh, publicly is that uh, because Nandan Nilakani was such a whiz kid, I think they became over ambitious. I'll tell you one simple example. Mm -hmm. Because uh, giving everybody a UID is a problem in itself. The banking, uh, having everybody account is a problem in itself. What happens is when you put these together, you multiply it. So if the probability was 0.8 and 0.8 just technically, You'll only get 0.6 if you multiply it. So uh, I would have preferred, frankly, and I think we would have been more effective if we had gone systematically, which is what we had proposed. First, give everybody a UID mm -hmm. number so that we know who they are, who are the included, who are the excluded. Mm -hmm. You know, there are lots of people who don't get a single program. Part of the purpose, as I envisaged the UID, was to be able to identify these people mm -hmm. who don't get a single payment from the government. We have. Yeah. 250 different programs mm -hmm. at the district level. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who don't even get one. So okay. that was part of the purpose. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, what we are doing is, is correct. It's mm -hmm. ambitious. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I think, was too ambitious to do too quickly. Okay. Jayati. Yeah. 
You know, I, I want to take a little bit from what everybody said, and my take home from this would be that, look, these are indeed two separate issues. I think my personal view on the UID is that there are all kinds of problems. We also know that biometric indicators are deeply problematic for manual laborers, that around 10% of that population gets excluded, which in India is a very, very large number. And so I have lots of problems with the UID. But that's not the issue. I think financial inclusion is a whole different ballgame. And it is neither necessary or sufficient, the UID, for financial inclusion. So it's not necessary because all the things that Charan Singh mentioned, you can do without a UID. It's not sufficient because, as we have said, it doesn't provide you most of the most important functions of financial services in a country like India. Every producer, that is to say every farmer, every cultivator, every craftsperson, every micro-entrepreneur, every tradesperson, every retailer, they're all producers who would like to get access to credit. So we have to think about financial inclusion in a very separate way, de-link it from UID, and that will perhaps make us stop thinking that UID provides a solution. I think that's a big disappointment of the Nachiket Committee report, which is that it tends to link the two, and really I think that's a red herring. So the, uh, the broad conclusion that I can draw from what all of you have said is that the technology is one thing, but uh, really you have to look at a whole lot of other issues which, which bogged us down for all these decades. Organizational sure. and or, or, class. Yeah. And so yeah. on that note, uh, we will uh, uh, end this uh, discussion. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.